Welcome back. It's not going to be an easy road ahead trying to pick up the pieces and restore our local economy after the destruction caused by the pandemic. Tomorrow, City Council will have its first meeting of the COVID-19 Response and Recovery Committee. I spoke to newly elected City Council member Marnie Von Wilford, who's going to co-chair the committee. I know one of your first assignments is you're going to be the co-chair of this new COVID response and recovery committee. And I guess the last time city council formed one of these things was back when the wildfires were, were happening. Um, why did you think that we needed something like this now? So standing up a COVID recovery committee in city council has been my priority since the day I got elected. You know, I, this is actually my second time going through a public health crisis. I served in the Peace Corps in Botswana, helping children who are born with AIDS during the uh, or HIV during the AIDS epidemic. So I've already deployed public health programs, and I realized every single level of government needs to be coordinated in the response and recovery. And so the city council's job is really to help small businesses here and residents, seniors, those who are vulnerable, get through this crisis. And we're able to do that with long-term and short-term planning, such as. If the, if the state shut down indoor businesses, we can issue permits so you can operate outside safely. If the state says these are the vaccines, we can make sure that they get to every single community in San Diego. So I want to be here to help. And I know I spoke with you about this before, but you know many San Diegans that I've interviewed have said that they it, sometimes this can be confusing. They don't know exactly where to turn for resources or help. They hear that there are programs, but they don't know who to ask. Um, you have the county, you have the city council, you have the state. Will this committee address that confusion? Yes, so we're gonna work in partnership with the mayor's office and the county directly to make sure we're not crossing paths, we're all on the same page. And one of the lessons we learned, for example, is the last time we had a rent relief subsidy to make sure that tenants aren't thrown out in the street and landlords get paid, people didn't know which subsidy to apply to. Like you said, is it the county, is it the city? People have people calling in all the time. We learned the lesson to have one portal where everyone can apply, and then on the back end, we will look at where your zip code is and distribute you to the correct place. So that's part of the, the nature of this committee, is to be a focused place to listen to our residents and hear what they need so that we can then plan for them. And I know one of the things we also chatted about was that, you know, with the pandemic, there is sort of these unique challenges. There's been a lack of information because we're still learning things on a monthly basis. Um, but you also mentioned that when it came to things like rent relief, uh, how that was actually addressed with the city um, is still a little bit unclear. Do you hope to sort of do some research into like how these uh, policies are trickling down to the people? Exactly. So uh, oftentimes the city council or the mayor's office, since we're all trying to deal with this massive crisis, would pass an ordinance and move on mm -hmm. and not think to go back and review it and make sure everyone's getting the access they need or making sure, for example, there's a huge digital divide. So are people not able to access our online portal? So this way, landlords, for example, could possibly apply for their tenants. And that's something we've put into the new rent relief. But if we don't stand back and reflect on what we've done and are constantly trying to improve, we're not doing the best that we can for our residents. And, you know, we've been a year into this pandemic at, up until this point. But another issue that I've been hearing a lot from residents of San Diego is feeling like they can't necessarily engage with their elected leaders. It's not as easy. Is this committee, is there going to be a place within this committee for people to really get in touch with you guys and express their concerns? Yes. So we want to have small businesses come and speak and give testimony about what's working for them, what's not. We've stood up outdoor permits, for example, and now finally we're realizing we need to help make all these outdoor decks ADA compliant mm -hmm. so that our customers with disabilities have access. So that's, for example, a way we're going to help respond. We want to also get tourism back up on operating safely. So we're going to invite a lot of our tourism leaders to come in, give testimony, tell us what they need from the city. How can we be a partner to make sure we do become the safe city to travel to when tourism is ready again. Anything else you want your constituents to know about what you guys are working on? Yep, uh, making sure that we do oversight into how our taxpayer money is spent is a huge responsibility for us and so that'll be a great way for us to see how we're spending all of the stimulus money. Also we want to focus on helping get getting schools open again and how can the city be a partner and getting students back to in-person learning safely. You know, we have rec centers or libraries or parks that we use and have joint partnerships with the schools. So why don't we focus our efforts on that too? 
but it, people, please do write in, call us, um, please participate in the city council meetings. They're all open to the public and online or on Zoom webinar, and we'd love to have you come. Awesome. Well, Marnie, thank you so much. You have a very ambitious agenda ahead of you, and I don't necessarily envy you, but I'm looking forward to see what you get done. Great. Thank you so much. Straight ahead on Politically Speaking, Governor Newsom appointed Dr. Shirley Weber to be California's Secretary of State, leaving her seat as the 79th Assemblywoman vacant. Meet the five candidates who are hoping to get the job.